Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with it? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slam ever found out. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, if Rusty and only the guy we set up knew, then no. He doesn't have a problem putting an innocent man away. Very good. You want to like Rusty. He cares. Okay, Rollins Bowling Alley, 4.29pm. We're in the afternoon, let's go. And Evelyn did have a, a pin in here, so... That could be something to remember. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tierney. Ah, there's the Tierney. It's a pin set. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. It stuck in my mind. She was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy, Forrest? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. There, look in the back. Somebody's running. Well, it's got to be him. Come here, Tiernan. Tiernan! LAPD! I knew it. Told you we were going to run. Oh, it's a car chase. Try again, here we go. There! Let's do this. What are you waiting for? Get after him! Right, we I might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to land it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. Clean this asshole off the road. This isn't the killer. We can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. He's going through the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. The what if going? they run because someone's setting them up? Because the they're they still going. You pushed these tires. Yeah, don't make up ridiculous stories for them, detective. Leave that to the perp's imagination. Shoot him. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. Whoa, looks like we're going into the tunnels. God damn it, he'll kill himself. It's all right, as long as he doesn't kill us, I'm okay with it. Oh my God, this kid's crazy. He's going to kill us. I'll be honest guys, I pulled back ages ago. I heard his tire pop and there were sparks. So I pulled back and then I got into that big traffic jam thing. I thought we I thought we I thought we'd got him. And we have to make sure next time because I had him, I had him really quick. And then oh, I just slowed down. Idiot. I'll make sure next time next time won't stop until the on until the car's upside down on its roof. I need to remember to go for overkill from now on. Okay, let's go to McCaffrey's. You can drive. <laughs> They're both doing. Oh, it's gonna slide along. Um. Yeah, I'll just make sure next time I make sure this car blows up or something, then I'll stop. I don't think we did too much damage though. It shouldn't really affect our points at the end too much. Ok, 
Okay, now he is in apartment six. Let's just have a look to make sure. There we are. G. McCaffrey. McCaffrey is in apartment six. And that's going to be upstairs. There's about four apartments downstairs. I've told you before, guys, look for a door with a gold handle. If you can see a door with a gold handle, that is your door. There, look. There you go. You don't need to know the number, just look for a gold handle. That's how you know if the door is accessible to you. Doesn't look like anybody's home. What do you think I should do? Terrible shade. <laughs> Means there's nobody to let us in. You want to do the honors, fellas? Oh, go on, then. There we go. Ah, let's have a look at this place. Nothing major in the kitchen. No gold handle on that door, so I can't go in there. What's this? He is. Just thinking. Here we go. What's this? No good to me. Oh, that's nothing. Okay, let's go down here. What's that? Drink? Doesn't give me anything to go on. What would I say? It doesn't seem important, that. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, look at this, guys. Now, that's not important, the look of it, but look at this. It's the other part of her letter, of Evelyn Summers' letter. Take long before you are healed and you can come home. And put your things back into your old room with a lock on the door for your privacy. You can come and go as you please. I will... I will care for you, and you can return to your normal life. Well, it's not good though, guys, because it was obviously from someone who loved it. Her mother. There you go, Augusta Summers. Or from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. Oh, well. My mother's going to know there's no point soon. That book looks like nothing, but let's have a quick look. No. Nope. Nothing. Incidental. Yep. Okay. Oh, what's that on the floor? Bloodstone cl Bloodstoned. Blood stained clothes. And a tire iron. Is it a tire iron? A manipulative. What's that? Oh, Rollins Bowling Alley. He said he didn't know her. And we have the I see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Interesting. Is that you, Grosvenor? Hello. Who yeah. are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. It is a morning. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. <laughs> Surely we can ride him up for that. A citation, at least. Rusty. You can just imagine it going to court for that, can't you? So what are you charged with? Well, I had a carrier pigeon and I was drunk. Okay. That's that cop. Seems like a decent guy. Who the hell are you talking to? There's nobody stood with you, pal. What? Oh god. That's that cop. Seems a decent guy. I'm just not talking to anyone. I'm stood on my own. <laughs> oh god. Some strange people around here. Okay, McCaffrey, do not give me trouble. Come quietly. Grosvenor McCaffrey! Oh yeah, you've lost the composure now, haven't you, boy? Sit down and we'll talk. Get our wheels. Yes, you're not. You haven't got your composure now, have you? Where did your composure go? See where your composure's gone. I'm going to give you a colon punch in a minute. You a runner, McCaffrey? You come hey, on, McCaffrey. You don't get away. You just start getting away from me. 
Oh my. That's when I see him. There he is, Officer. There he is, Officer. I know that. This is it. This is where you go down. I feel Keep it. it. Up. LAPD. Oh, it comes a run. Oh, yes. There you go. Feel the pain. You're under oh, arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. I'll go all, all casual now again and start trying to be all intelligent. Now he's actually being caught. I lost his composure, though. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be the cap. Unless Terranen set him up. You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Nah, I think Jameson's just a weirdo. I think that's about all. So what's that Dahlia fuck? How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. Do you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty? Who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. Rusty just doesn't like to speculate, does he? It just works. It works on nothing but the evidence or what it seems to be at the time. Or the fact that it's always the husband. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Central Police Station, 7 12 pm. We are going to wrap this up now, guys. This is the final part, surely. We have some interviews to do. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, Jim? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. <laughs> Tiernan is a one, McCaffrey is in two. I want a confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young fellas. Okay, let's do this. We shall start with... Uh, is Tiernan down here? I want Tiernan first. Nope, that's McCaffrey. And he's in the other one, which is over here. I actually know this place pretty well now. I'm getting used to it, even though that's not the right way. <laughs> Sorry, okay, is it? No, I didn't. <laughs> they weren't even as prints and he's still. I do know how I'm going. This is it. <laughs> no, that was funny. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Well, that's a lie. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? Because McCaffrey said that you were last seen going into a hotel with Tiernan. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. Evelyn, Evelyn, whatever. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night, we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. I love the facial expressions because of how they did the uh, ca the camera work on the proper people's faces, the real actors. At times they pull certain Aristotle's faces and it looks really good. The book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it? She wanted something of his. I don't like how you said that. I. I don't think you're telling the truth, but I can't prove that you're lying. I'm going to doubt you. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out of some kind of labor dispute, but, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Buff, James T. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night. And she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. 
that's a lie because if I remember right, didn't the um, liquor store owner say that she came in to buy some drink for a young boy here for a boy after an argument well that must be him so you are lying you're lying Tiernan you've been fighting with her you fought and I'm not lying she got up and left that was it oh calm down now this will cut what you calm down as soon as you say this and they know they've been caught out lying Watch this. She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the liquor store owner, you're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. See, there you go. She wanted to care for me. She would never stop talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. Kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Hmm. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. But I don't think you use it just for that, do you? Doubt. The coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. Oh dear. Okay, well let's leave him for now and go and talk Evelyn to McCaffrey. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. Hmm. You ran the light on Olympic. We finally called her to McCaffrey. Okay, let's see if I can use my skills to find the right door this time. Oh yes, there we go. Look. That was the skill. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? Oh, there you go. Look, his composure right, right now. Try to be a have something to hide. Try to be Touché, intelligent. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Okay, alibi. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home. Writing. I'm working on a manuscript. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm. Oh, wait there. The torn letter. Now, if if he had the second half, that means it had to be taken from her handbag that night, which put him at the casino. And that was after midnight, so obviously he's lying. Ha! I nearly forgot about that. So you've got to remember your facts, guys. You've got to remember your evidence. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? The letter that I was just talking about. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. Access to tie iron. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? But yet, you threatened to kill Evelyn because Tiernan heard you. 
I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Yes, Tiernan's accusation. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation, that's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. I'm missing something, guys. There's something that's going to change all this. He accuses Tiernan now, yet Tiernan says he thought he'd done more than... Oh, wait there. Because Tiernan says he thought he'd done more than just the small petty crimes he mentioned. So, let's... Oh, I get to say it. Operator, give me R and I. Do I get to say my number? Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty-seven. Ah, <laughs> yes. How can I help, Detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. That's what we need. Just a moment, Detective. Let's see what. It, let's see if we get what. Worst thing. Oh. Oh, look at that. Thank whoa, whoa, whoa. Well. It seems like he has got a little bit more than petty stuff. Let's go back in and ask him about that. Your military service, my friend. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, oh. it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Yes, you have been in trouble for violence. Liar, lie, liar. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Oh, he doesn't think, you see, he doesn't think we'll get his military record. That's what's up. So let's hit We know it. all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. He's never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! There we go. She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her! And there we go. You are my suspect. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady. Who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Is he happy? Congratulations, oh, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse. And neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. Oh, yes, look. No composure now. Of anger. And what did we get? Did we, is that it? Oh, that's it. Yay! Okay, here we are. We we'll do the case report. So the studio secretary murder case report. Clues found. Seventeen of seventeen. Questions correct. Fourteen of fourteen. Very good. Vehicle damage none. Oh, I thought I took some vehicle damage in that um, pile up I had. Because I didn't do any any other vehicle damage either, with the look of it. Injuries none. City damage about well, thirty nine dollars. Grosvenor. Oh, case notes. Grosvenor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. 
Well, there we go. We've got a five out of five. And that is the studio secretary murder case closed. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. And, uh, well, we've got another good score again. So, yeah, very successful. I'm still not convinced because, yet again, there was bloody clothes left on the floor with the um, bloody tie iron there. It all seems a bit too perfect. But we do have him and, well, everybody seems happy. So that's it for now. And we will do the next one very soon. So for now, guys, you take good care of yourselves and goodbye for now, my friends.